Hello and welcome to today's video, today's Shop My Stash. If you're unfamiliar with what a Shop My Stash is, basically every month I go through my entire collection and I pick out an assortment of products that I would like to focus on. Usually I keep those items for a month. This time is a little different because I ended up keeping April's monthly makeup basket for May as well. First, I'm going to go through my thoughts on those items and then afterwards I will show what I've selected for June and why. I'm wearing a makeup of both of my previous makeup basket as well as the new one on my face today so I can give some thoughts on them already. If you enjoyed today's video while you're watching, please do go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into it. I get into my thoughts I do just want to get any disappointment out of the way I know some of you look forward to this part I did already choose my products for June usually I would dig through and select with you all but I'm just running short on time we're about to go away to Florida for a few days to celebrate a friend's wedding and I have all kinds of packing and prep to do before then and then also too I have another shift at work so I just didn't think I could make it happen and this was to save some time I promise next time I will actually go through with you guys. Before I begin my thoughts, I do also want to say I'm going to be doing speed reviews. If you have questions, feel free to leave them below. Last time, my last shot my stash, which will be linked below by the way, I forgot to say that. Any others are going to be in the description box. But my last one, I had to force edit that down to 45 minutes. In the middle of editing, I was like, damn, do I ever shut up? I <laughs> was talking so much about each product. So if you guys do you have questions, feel free to ask them, but I'm going to go through these fairly quick. Let's start with the palettes, the Melt Gemini palette. I love this palette. It is one of my favorites. I do reach for it more in the fall just because it is very earthy toned and then it also has the side with the greens. And even though we're getting into warmer weather, it had just been a minute since I'd reached for it. So I wanted to include it in my Shop My Stash. It's pretty messy, but this is such a perfect palette to me. I could probably wear greens the rest of my life and I would be okay with that. And then even the neutral side, this is a really good example of how to do neutrals without making them boring. This Lorelei shade has such a cool undertone. It has that yellowy undertone to it. That's also in the Mochi shade as well. That's another of my favorite shades in this palette. And then the shimmers in here, I do like that it is mostly matte. You only have two shimmers to play with, but these are also gorgeous. As far as the formula goes, the mattes are a bit drier. And then for the shimmers, I do think they perform best on the finger or with a damp brush. And for blendability, I usually just use a little bit at a time and work it through versus adding too much shadow. That's when I run into trouble with this one. But I'm glad I threw it into my Shop My Stash because it had been forever since I reached for it. Next, I had the mini palettes from the Animal Crossing X ColourPop collab. This was something I knew I was going to buy regardless of what they look like. I love Animal Crossing. It single-handedly got me through quarantine last year besides my dog. I haven't played in a couple of months now. I really need to go on there, but I am not looking forward to going on and getting rid of all the weeds. It's probably going to take me an hour. Before these, I made a video with these and I really liked the look that I created, but I didn't reach for them again. So that's why I put them into my Shop My Stash. I do have some issues now that I've used them longer and it's not about the formula. ColourPop's formula is always pretty consistent. Their mattes blend pretty easily. Even though there is some fallout, I generally do my eyes first, so it, that doesn't really bother me. Same thing with their shimmers. They do do a lot of pressed glitters in their palettes, which I'm not a huge fan of. I will use them from time to time, but I'm someone who likes more mattes with a couple of shimmers. And as far as the layout of these, most of them have one true matte, a pressed glitter, a shimmer, and then another matte with some glitter or shimmer in it. There's only one that's matte all the way in each one. So I found when I was using these that I had to grab other palettes to pair with them. 
So this one right here, the Resident Rep, that is a matte with some shimmer in it. That one actually has quite a bit. There's others that have less in them. And then it has the pressed glitter as well, the Island Designer. Those I usually will reserve for my inner corner. I know that's kind of dangerous. That's probably where I shouldn't be using them. But just to bring some brightness in there, I don't usually do a pressed glitter all over my lid. Same thing, the Taylor one. What is this called? Taylor's Ticket. It was covered in shadow. This has shimmer in it as well. It's not quite quite a matte. And then Nook Ink, which is probably my favorite. Again, I really love the greens. And then the What A Hoot. This shade, the Celestial shade, that one has tiny little flecks of glitter in it. It's probably not going to pick up, but that's the shade that kind of annoyed me the most because I didn't realize they were in there when I went to use it. And I had blended it throughout my crease. And I was like, oh, why is there glitter? And that's why. Now that I know this, I don't think it would have kept me from buying these palettes. I'm still happy to have them in my collection. Again, it's really easy for me to just grab another palette to use them with. But, but just overall, those are my thoughts. And then I have the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the second time that I've put it into a Shop My Stash and it will probably make it into more. I'm just trying to use this up. I've had it for a while. And then also too, I really wanna try Samantha Ravendahl's. It's a liquid luminizer. You can use it alone. You can mix it with your foundation. You can put it under foundation, over foundation. Today, I mixed it with the Pure 4-in-1. I do also have my Catrice Prime and Fine on, which always gives my skin a very glowy look look to it, but this also helps as well. This is in the fair shade. And typically the way I've used this is I put it on after my tinted moisturizer or foundation, but I really like the way it looked today when I did mix it in. So I think I'm gonna start doing that because it also helped me use it up more. And then I have from Bare Minerals, their tinted moisturizer, the Complexion Rescue. I've been using this for a few years. This is not my first one. I've had several of these. I've gone through many tubes. I do have, I think, another one in my back stock. So I wanted to go ahead and use this one up. And I thought I was going to make it through, but I didn't in time for this. I think I have maybe one use left of this. I do really love this tinted moisturizer. I used to be able to just throw it on and not think about it. I didn't even put a primer underneath it half the time, but my skin has just gotten drier over time. And I also have more visible pores than I used to. So I typically use it with a primer now. And I do have to be careful that when I'm putting it on that it's not caking up in certain areas. Usually right around here is where I'll start to get that cakiness on my forehead as well too is where my skin tends to be more flaky. I did recently pick up from Smashbox their new one, the Halo. It's actually in my June makeup basket because I like to see how the two of them compare in terms of coverage. This one has a very light coverage to it and I would like something with just a little bit more. And then I have some blushes that I used, the Flower Blush Balm Color Drops. I love this formula. I think I have three of these. This one is in the shade Melon. I thought it would be a pretty pop for spring. This is one of my favorite formulas for cream blushes. And they have really just popped up over, I feel like, this last year. Every brand is coming out with a cream blush right now. KVD just launched some. I saw those. The tube is pretty cool for those. But this formula is is so beautiful. I love this color. I'm going to shear it out next to it. So you can see it is pretty pigmented and then you can shear it out as well. When I use this, I typically apply it right to my cheek. I just squeeze a little bit out at a time and do a dot in the center and then work it up. I usually do three dots and then blend it out with a sponge. Two reasons why I love this formula. One is that it blends out super easy and it looks very natural even when you do use a brighter color. And the second reason is it is one of the only ones that, that I don't feel like disturbs any makeup underneath. I've even put this on top of powder by accident and it still worked just fine. And I can't say the same for most cream blushes that I use. So I'm happy I included this one too. And then from Hourglass, I have the Ambient Edit Volume 4. This launched the same year that I started my channel. It was such a big splurge for me when I did buy this. I know for a fact I picked it up during the Sephora VIB sale that happened around the holidays and I could not stop using this, especially the blushes in here. Since then, I did kind of put it to the wayside. I bought many more blushes and many more bronzers, even full sizes of their blushes, and it had been a while since I used it. Before I actually get my thoughts on this palette, I will say, because I don't believe that I've said this, I've consciously been not buying from Hourglass, and that's probably been going on for about a year. They just aren't the most inclusive, and around the time what they were launching, it was pretty pitiful. 
I want to say it was a concealer or something. It was last year. I don't remember, but it made me put them in a time out. I will be keeping an eye on them. I hope things do change, but for now, I don't want to be supporting them, which really bums me out because as far as performance goes, I don't think I've ever had a bad hourglass product. For the most part, all of them have exceeded my expectations. So hopefully things do change. As for this palette, it has two of their finishing powders, which I still, I really didn't reach for them too much. I have a full size one of these as well, and I never use it. I have to get better about that. But as two of those, it has a highlight, which is nice. It's not the most blinding highlight, but it is very natural looking. A bronzer. And then the two blushes in here, which Hourglass always doesn't swatch very well. They just look so much different when you would put them on. Like they almost look chalky when just swatched. This is Luminous Glow. And then Euphoric Fusion, which is said to be a strobe blush. You can barely see them. So you'll just have to take my word. I have worn them in plenty of videos. There's just something so magical about their blushes. They always look so skin-like and they give you just the healthiest glow. There is nothing else that I've ever tried that performs like an hourglass blush. And I think this one, this brighter poppy one, I think that's one of my favorites of all time. This one leans more mauve and I do reach for that one a lot too. Putting this into my shop my stash made me remember how much I love them, but it also made me kind of sad because everything else I just said, I did realize I forgot to talk about the primer. I typically like to go through these in order, but this is Tatcha the Liquid Silk Canvas. I love the original. This is another thing that I purchased when it launched and then let it sit for a while. So in using this again, and it is the only primer I used on my face today, you can see my pores a little bit and obviously I have some texture to my skin as well. It just leaves down a nice base for your makeup to go on. It doesn't do the most in terms of pore filling, but it gives a bit of a blurring effect. And then it also, I feel like helps a tiny bit with moisture too. It has like a creamy lotion-y type of consistency, but it feels pretty light on the skin. And I haven't found that I had any issues putting this with anything else. It worked well underneath both the tinted moisturizers I used as well as foundations. The scent really does it for me though. It's very light in the primer, but it is still there. I love it. I really need them to come out with a fragrance. And then Nabla Skin Glazing. There's something about this packaging that I just really find pleasing. It's pretty simple, but not understated. As far as the highlighter goes, the performance of it, it is called a skin glaze. So I guess it's not quite a highlighter. It's very natural looking. When I applied it today, I applied it on top of my setting mist, which was the Luminous Setting Mist from Morphe. There are other highlighters I would do that with, and you could really see it like it would be a blinding highlight this is still fairly melted and it looks very natural so if you want a blinding highlighter this is not it but if you want something that really looks like it's a part of the skin and just gives you some luminosity this is a really nice formula this is the ozone shade if i didn't say that obviously that's very built up i one of these days i'm going to put it on my lids because it's really pretty I had this on my wish list for so long and the first time I used it, I did not put setting spray down first and I was a little bummed by it. I thought it was going to be brighter than what it was, but now that I figured out how to use it, I really love the look of it. And then next from Milk, I have the Kush Mascara as well as the primer. These are heavy. This is probably one of the heaviest mascaras I ever felt. I feel like I could really like bang something with it. But the Kush Mascara, this was my favorite for a long time there. And I have to start actually checking products before I throw them into my makeup basket because this is dried out. It was just a little clumpy to try to put on. I think I used it twice. As far as the wand goes on here, it is a bigger wand. I used to love it for the volume it gave me. But I think I just prefer a more lengthening mascara right now. I really can't get over the Ilia one, the Limitless Lash Mascara. Still obsessed with that, still using it every day. And I just don't look for mascaras like this anymore, but I did really love it around that time. And then for the lash primer, I originally bought this because Jay Kissa had put it into her Instagram stories. She was using it in her brows. She was back combing it through and then using a tinted brow gel on top of it. And I wanted to try that out. And it did really help them stay in place and gave some fullness to the brow. I feel like every few months I kind of change up my brow routine. So that was mine for a little while. But I hadn't actually tried this on my lashes very much. It is white. So when you apply it, you do have to wipe off the wand or else you can get 
some of that showing through your actual mascara or you really have to cake on the mascara so that it does hide it. It makes my lashes somewhat heavy. Maybe I'll have to try using less and I do wanna actually try it with the Ilia mascara to see if I enjoy it. I should have reached for this more than I did. It was just an extra step that I didn't feel like doing most days. I have two liners that I used. This one I pretty much actually used up. This is Stila the Stay All Day in Intense Black. I've purchased this so many times. I go back and forth between this one and the KVD Tattoo Liner now that I can buy the tattoo liner again. And then from Flower Beauty, this is a gel liner. I pretty much was only using this on my waterline. It's in the shade Brownstone. Didn't run didn't smudge and for the waterline I do think that it stayed a pretty decent amount of time. Flower Beauty is one of my favorite drugstore brands. I'd say it's probably in the top three. I think it's them, Elf, and NYX. I really like Milani too but they don't offer as much or at least at my Ulta we don't have as much Milani. They probably have more than what I've actually checked out. Three lip products I wanted to focus on. This one I only did wear once. It's from CoverGirl. It is the Baby Bite. A nice coral color. And this formula is fairly hydrating. It doesn't have the greatest staying power because of that, but that's okay with me too. There's a time and a place for both. A really matte lip that is long lasting and then something like this that is more sheer. It's just a really nice poppy color for spring. And then I also used Ludwig from KVD. I have a full size of this that I've never opened and then I have a tiny bit left in this one. Another thing I thought I was going to be able to use up and I did not, but I do really love this shade and I did reach for it. I'd say maybe four or five times-ish. I don't wear as much lipstick with the mask, of course. And then I also did the Tower 28 Gloss in Cashew Milk. This is such a pretty color and it does have a nice opacity to it where you get a fair amount of that color, but it can be sheared out. The shine is nice on on this one and it's also not too sticky. This one paired really nice with Zaya from Lunar Beauty. That's my favorite liquid lipstick as of late. And then also too with just some neutral liners that I had. I also like to pair it with that. No real negatives on any of those. And then Morphe, the Luminous Setting Spray. I almost used this up completely. I had picked this up during a sale at some point. I picked up this one and then their traditional continuous setting spray. That's been one of my favorites for years. And I decided to give this one a go. And then I let it sit in my collection collection for about five months and I didn't touch it as I do. This is great. I actually really like this. It doesn't have the same sprayer that the continuous one does, but it is still really fine and it does give a really nice luminous look to the skin. I still paired it today with my normal Catrice Prime and Fine because that one is a little bit more dewy and I wanted to be really dewy today, but I like the overall look and performance of this. It also has a really nice scent to it. It definitely has like a perfumey scent, but it's not too strong. Now that I've given it a glowing review. I do have to say this is something I realized maybe a month ago. It was a post from Cruelty Free Kitty. Morphe is in the gray area, which I did not realize. That gray area being that they claim to be cruelty free, but then they also aren't giving full disclosure about where their products are sold. And there's other questions too that they're not answering. Both Logical Harmony and Cruelty Free Kitty have a series of questions that they ask individual brands before putting them up on their website. And I think Morphe is one of those brands that hasn't responded. Fenty is the same deal. I did not realize that either. And God, it hurts to not purchase Fenty. I'll still be using some Fenty on my channel and showing it on occasion when it comes up, like during my shop, my stashes, or maybe in some videos. I have more Fenty than I do of Morphe products, but both of those brands are in the gray area and I won't be buying them until their policies are more clear. I will say I totally would have repurchased this if I was confident that they were cruelty free. And now it is time for what I've selected in June, all the products I'll be focusing on this month. I have my little index card here. I do write them all down because when I'm doing my makeup, it can be very easy to put something back into my drawer and forget it's a part of my shop, my stash. So as far as palettes go, I don't know why I've kept the packaging for this because I have already used this just once. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Zendo Palette. I picked this up during the last Sephora sale. I just used it, I think it was last week, and it was really pretty. 
I like the performance of it. Like I said, we're about to go away, so I think I'm going to be taking this one with me. It's an easy neutral palette that I can pretty much pair with just about anything. And then this palette I bought before the mini Zendo. I randomly just opened this up while I was stocking at work at Ulta. First of all, kudos to BH because I think they're the only brand that I've seen do this. They had this wrapped up but it was in a way that you could still open it and see the colors inside. It's been really interesting to see what brands have done with COVID and most stores not allowing testers. Most brands that I've seen will still have a cardboard container outside of the palette with just a picture of what the shades look like. And we all know it never actually looks <laughs> like those pictures. So I really liked what they did where it had just some plastic wrap on top and I could still see the colors inside because I was immediately drawn in in. This is such a beautiful palette. It's very pastel, but they're like bright pastels. And then the shimmers in here, there's just some really unique colors like the Rodeo Drive as well as the Sunset Boulevard. Absolutely gorgeous. I reached for this twice. One of those times was today. I get so excited about new makeup and then I don't actually use it. So I want to put it into this one because I think it would be so easy to come up with looks for this in the summer. Today I used Dreamer and that is the only shade I used all over. I never do that. I never do one shadow looks, but I love the way it looks today and the way it turned out. I've never seen anyone talk about it. I have no clue when it launched. Let me know if you have this or your thoughts on BH's palettes in general. The only one I've ever tried other than this one is the Take Me Back to Brazil and I never reach for that one. And then I have two Smashbox products for the face. I have the Photo Finish Foundation Primer in Pore Minimizing. This is just some kind of trial size. I found it in my primers and realized I've never opened it and used it. It's probably been there for over a year. So I'm gonna give this a go see what I think and I think this is something that I can actually use up maybe not in a month but I can at least see my thoughts on it see if I maybe want the full size of it and then the Smashbox Halo Healthy Glow all-in-one tinted moisturizer I've had my eyes on this for a minute I used this once last week so far so good but I'm going to keep using it see what I think of it I'm going to take this with me to Florida to see how it performs in the heat I don't really need to go to Florida to do that because Maryland gets hot enough but surprisingly we've had some pretty mild weather here. It kind of goes up and down. Some days are pretty mild and a little breezy and then we'll have random flare-ups of hot weather. July is usually when it gets pretty bad though. So we'll see. This is in the shade Fair Light. I'll just show it on my hand the kind of coverage it gives. I just used a tiny dab of it. So fairly light coverage. Let's build it up a little bit more. I'll try this with various primers and setting sprays and I can give you guys my thoughts on it at the end of the month or the beginning of July. And then from Salt New York, I have one of the quads. I think I mentioned this in my full face of cream video that I did. I don't think I actually used it and maybe this will force me to use it in an upcoming video by putting it into my shop, my stash. I treated myself to one of their quads. They've been on my radar for a while now. I think I've actually had a screenshot of just their logo in my phone forever but I finally bought a quad so I got a bronzer two blushes as well as a highlighter so far so good I really like the way these look on the skin but I do want to try them out with other products put them over different foundations different tinted moisturizers and then even see if I can get the blushes to work over a powder to see how they perform I can let you guys know I just wanted to make sure I was getting a lot of time with these and that's why I've thrown it into my June basket I did grab another blush. I wear blush pretty much every day. Even on my lazy work days, I usually put some brow gel in, some mascara, concealer, always concealer, and then a blush too if I have time. And I wanted a powder option just because I know it'll be a little quicker than going in with a cream blush. I had realized I have barely reached for this. I have their other one. I think it's the Dormy Duo. That one I got first and I've used that one a ton, but I picked this one up and really only used it I think once or twice. This is the Rose Gold Duo. It has marigold as well as rose petal. This is the one I put on today. And besides the Nabla highlighter, it's the only thing I have on. I didn't want to put on bronzer. I really wanted the blush to speak for itself. And I think it looks beautiful. It has such a nice glow to it. I'll swatch it as well as the other one. Really happy I picked this up again. The other shade is really beautiful too. I look forward to using that one. 
And then NYX High Gloss Powder. This is a finishing powder. When I have used this, I've used it right above my brows, a little bit on my nose, and then my Cupid's bow as well. It's not quite as bright as a highlighter. It's just like a little bit of something, but I'm not great at using this. Just like the Hourglass one, I always forget about them. So I wanted to put this in to my Shop My Stash. I picked this up recently, the Kosas Creamy Concealer. I think that's what it's called. The Revealer Concealer. This is in the shade 1.5C. This has been on my wish list for a long time and I've been loving Kosas products so much lately that I decided to grab it. I wore it today for the first time. I think it looks great. I did put a fair amount of foundation under my eyes too, the pure foreign one. And then I just used this right in here where I have the most darkness and I used a little bit on my nose too. So far so good, but I really have to use this alone to talk about it more. I had some creasing underneath my eyes before I put powder on, but I did, like I said, I used foundation there as well. So I will use this up throughout the month. Well, not use it up, but I will use it a ton throughout the month and I'll let you know my thoughts on it. I have some liners and mascara. This from e.l.f. I bought for my dedicated e.l.f. video when I did a full face of e.l.f. and that was last fall. I think it was last fall. It was a while ago. I never actually used this product. I never opened it either. So I'm going to open this, see what my thoughts are. And then I have a liner from Marc Jacobs. I think it was announced maybe just four days ago that Marc Jacobs, the makeup line, is going out of business. It's all on sale on Sephora right now. I don't know if this is available, but there are probably some of these liners available. I know they're really popular. It's a really pretty champagne-y color, but I haven't reached for this in a while. And I can even tell just from putting it on my hand that it's starting to dry out. So I need to use this up more. I can't remember what the longevity of this product is like too, as far as how long it stays on the waterline. So I can update you guys on that later. And then I have from CoverGirl the Exhibitionist Mascara. I used this in a video too. I think it was a drugstore virgin and I loved it. I used it for a couple of months and then put it down. It got replaced with a new favorite. So I'm bringing it back out again to see what my thoughts are on it before it dries out. I only picked two lip products this time. I didn't do a gloss because this kind of works as one too. This is from ColourPop. It's a just a tint. And this is in the shade Give Me S'more. It's a really pretty nude but it has a lot of sheen to it. It's almost like a gloss too, and you can share this out more. I already had a couple of these, but then I got six more when I picked up the Animal Crossing collab with ColourPop. So I need to give these some more love and attention. And I thought this would be perfect for summer. And then I just picked a traditional lipstick from Melt. They just redid all their lipsticks, at least the way they look. They look absolutely gorgeous and I want all of them. I believe all the nude shades, those are all new, but then I also think they redid their old shades as well. So I figured I might as well work through one of them before buying any new ones. I'm sure I will cave soon. I almost caved the other day and bought one of the new nude ones. I can't remember what the name of it was. They're really calling out to me and I realized it had been a while since I picked up the melt lipstick that I do own. I put this on today. I put it on very sheer. I actually just put it onto my finger and dabbed it on before going in with the lip gloss. I also used a NYX liner in Ever as well as NYX butter gloss in Bit of Honey. So I don't know how much you can actually see this lip color. I will wear it alone soon. And then lastly, I have the original Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I really don't want to put this in here because this means that once I run out of it, I can't buy it again until their cruelty-free status becomes more clear and I don't have much of this left. I think it's about a third. The mist on here, I don't think I found a, another setting spray like it. It is so fine. Usually at this point, I would show you guys, but I am going to be savoring every last bit of this until I use it up. That is the goal though, to use it up throughout this month and then maybe find another that works like it. I don't think I've heard of anything else that is quite as fine as this mist, but if you know of one, do let me know, please. That is it for my Shop My Stash. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm looking at my time and I didn't do so well with doing speed reviews. I'm pretty sure this is still going to be a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you would like to see me and more of my remarks, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these products in the comments as well if you've tried any of them. I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I I will see you soon.